What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is New York City versus London City Comparison. This is going to be an interesting one, mm, isn't it? It's going to be good. We're not from London, we're obviously from Jersey. We know quite a bit about London. Mm -hmm. I've been to London a couple of times. You've been once, haven't you? Yep. We went together, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually went together. Uh, we've also been to New York City. We have. I think this is going to go into though finances, stuff like that, yeah. cost of living. So it's going to be interesting. Somewhere which is pretty similar to Jersey, London, which yeah. it pretty much is, um, compared to a US state. Let's see what we got. Smash that like button if you enjoy this kind of content, guys. Smash that subscribe button as well. Let us know if you live in New York City, or let us know the comparisons from some of your cities or states you live in. That'd yeah, be quite definitely. interesting in the comments below. How many likes should we get on this video? 2,605. There you go. Remember, Millie, remember at the end of the video. And because you will, you've got to smash that like button. Let's check out New York City versus <laughs> sure. London. City comparison. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. According to Travel and Leisure Magazine, the best city in the world right now you could visit is San Miguel de Allende in Mexico, oh, wow. followed by Charleston in the USA, followed mm -hmm. by Chiang Mai in Thailand. These three places, however, don't even get on the top 20 wait, wait, places wait. to... Wrong gear phones. <laughs> I bought some that felt uncomfortable. You snatched them this time, so. Uh, yeah, I think I did, to be fair. Charleston, though, in South Carolina, so many videos say how nice that place is. It's mm. such a left-field shout. We've got yeah. a visit there. We have to. Definitely got a visit there. To actually live, in this year's Quality of Living Index, a yearly list compiled by HR firm Mercer. Apparently, if you want to live the good life, you should move to Vienna, Austria, Zurich, Switzerland, or Auckland, New Zealand. The top 20 list doesn't include any cities from the UK or the USA, two countries that have arguably been the two heavyweights in the last century regarding power and wealth. These two countries, however, contain cities that attract millions of overseas visitors every year. Today, we are going to compare them in this episode of the infographic show, New York City versus London. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button so that you can be part of our notification squad. The and cities as. and as quick question, I know I paused already. Smash that like button and answer this question as well. Where would you prefer to live, New York City or London? Neither. Well, no, no, no. If you had to live in one, <laughs> you can't say neither. If you had to live in one, where would you prefer to live? I know my answer. I prefer to live in New York. Oh wow! How come? Because if you put them both into comparison, like. When I went, I was more excited about New York than London. Okay. I'd say I would prefer to live in London because it's less chill than New York. You know, New York's boom all the time, yeah, going, going, going. London's a bit more chill. When you think, what really made my decision in my head was New York's got better food. Uh, Depends on what you like, though. You just like McDonald's. I'd have to go McDonald's every day. You would definitely would. Well, we're clearly not going to be together very long. <laughs> so we live on opposite sides of the world. Yeah, I'm going to be in London. You'll be in New York. See you later. <laughs> These are two of the most visited places in the entire world. In 2016, though, the most visited city in the world by international China. travelers was Thailand's capital, Bangkok. 21.47 <laughs> million people wow. visited Bangkok that year. In second place was London with 19.88 okay. million visitors. And Can't in third place was Paris with 18.03 million visitors. The most visited US city was New York. New York City, and that was in fifth place with 12.75 million visitors. Dubai was in fourth. In the last five years, Bangkok held the first position three times and London twice. In our comparison, on, we might thereby deduce that London is more visitable than New York City. Let's find oh, wow. out why. First, we, we will go. take a look at the two cities' abridged history. We'll start Sweet. with London as it's the elder. The city of London is old, but nowhere near as old as some cities in the Middle East, China, or other parts of Europe. You'll know from our show on the British and Roman empires that Britain was invaded by the Romans in 43 AD. They established the city of Londinium that at the time was about the size of a small village in England right now. When the yeah. Romans left Londinium, it was pretty much a ghost what town. And for hundreds of years, it remained so. <laughs> Even the invading... Yo, ghost pops on the screen. What are they? <laughs> I know. <like, what> <laughs> invading Vikings didn't do much with it, and it wasn't until the Normans invaded from France and subjugated the country that London became a powerful city. William yeah. the Conqueror made London the Norman stronghold, building the famous Tower of London. The Normans would be the last people to to this date to successfully invade England. In medieval times, London grew in power and wealth, but that also included the spread of poverty, corruption, and greed among the upper echelons of society and bouts of population denuding plagues. It wasn't until 1850 that London became the largest city in the world in terms of 
population. Some sources say it was as early as 1825, though most scholars agree that London was the most populated city until the 1920s. Another city then took over right up until the 60s, and that was the city of New York. Long before New York City had high-rise buildings, it was the stomping ground of Algonquin natives who hunted and fished where people now trade stocks and eat pastrami wow, sandwiches. That's awesome, it wasn't until 1624 that European settlers would start a community in the city when families of the Dutch West India Company made a home of Nutton Island. That's now known as Governor's Island and is between Manhattan and Brooklyn. Being Dutch, they called this place New Amsterdam. Some historians say that the Dutch bought the area from the natives for a few trinkets. The peace between the natives and the Euro expansionists didn't last, and the trouble ended with a lot more native casualties than Dutch casualties. New Amsterdam soon covered much of what we regard as New York City today, but the imperialistic Brits guided by London prospectors would soon burst the Dutch bubble. On August 26, 1664, four British frigates sailed to New Amsterdam and in a bloodless coup took control and renamed it New York after the Duke of York, not the city of York, in the north of England. At oh, that time, the city had- Weren't even named after the city. What a weird fact that is. No, I'm not having that. What? I'm not <laughs> what having that. Mean, not having I'm not having that. that, I'm sorry, but if you just look at America, basically, it is, most of the names are just, they've just stolen names from everyone else. No, but that's because we've named that. But then obviously it's grown and it's because of the influence no, 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 we no, had no. when we... It's because of the influence. It's, they're not stealing yeah, but, yeah, names. But, yeah, but they've just gone, oh, we're going to have a place called Manchester. Oh, yeah. Let's copy England. Oh, we're going to have a place called New Amsterdam. Oh, let's copy Amsterdam. That was a Dutch. Yeah, but... It, it is 20 past 12 at night for us. This is the last video of our marathon thing. We'll currently be on holiday when you'll see me. So we are so tired. We don't even know what we say. Both of you guys are enjoying the content. I did think New York was named after York, though. Yeah, I thought, like, that is a, that's a nice little know. fact. But it's still after the Duke. What do you mean? Because, like, I've always called them copycats. But maybe they weren't. Well, there's something wrong with that. It's, they've put new in front of it. I've never had an issue with that. Like, New Jersey. That's yeah, but that's, the new like, where that's we are. like me just... Getting a new boyfriend and calling him New James. Well, that'd be different because you replace him. Anyway, that, that'd anyway be... it's too late for this conversation. No, that'd be like you calling yourself New James. I'd be like, yeah, oh, that's fine. My name's New James. New Millie. That's my new name now. New James. New James. That's how I want to be addressed. <laughs> you, you're tired and on one tonight, aren't you? What's my name? Amelia. Oh, <laughs> that's all I bird, guys. Let's check out New York City and London. What we got? About 1,500 Europeans and 375 Africans, most of whom were slaves. It remained that way for over 100 years, and even when American independence was on the cards, New York City was a stronghold for British loyalists. In 1783, the British were forced out, and in 1789, it became the first national capital of the US. Only in 1790 did the capital become Washington, DC. Like London, wow. the growing city had its fair share of growing pains, including great fires and huge loss of life due to yellow fever and cholera. Nonetheless, oh, wow. by 1850, the population was more than 550,000 and New York City had become a center of the world. So now we come to the present day. The population of London right now is thought to be about 8.7 million. This has spiked lately due to the arrival of ethnic minorities that make up about 44% of the city's population. Wow, London covers an area of 607 square miles, making it the biggest city in Europe. New York City has a population of 8.538 million and it is mixed in terms of ethnicity. About 44% of residents are white Caucasian, 27% Hispanic, 25% black or African American, with a much smaller mix of other ethnicities. The city covers 304 square miles and is the biggest city in the USA, though considerably smaller than London. But with almost equal populations, this means New Yorkers have far less space. So what yeah. about the standard of living in these cities? They are both pivotal cities regarding the financial sector, though one website claims that London's financial sector is slightly bigger with 340,000 employees to New York's 322,000. As of March 2017, the Global Financial Centers Index puts London at the center of the world, with New York hot on its heels in the number two spot. New York has more billionaires, but I did guess on a financial thing, New York would be better in London. Mm. That's what I'd have guessed, you know, because you like, live with the World Trade hey, Center and stuff like that. Don't you underestimate Britain. You want to move to New York. Don't you be getting on Britain's side again. Yeah, I do want to move. <laughs> I hate Britain. But... <laughs> you are but on one big today. Big up, Britain. <laughs> with 103 in 2017, according to Forbes, oh, well, London only has 72. London is said to have better job growth, though, over the last decade. Make us For the average Joe business. among us, how is life in these cities? Again, it depends on which source you read. The latest cost of living index by Expatizen puts New York as the fifth most expensive city to live in the world and London in 12th, with food and housing in New York being more expensive, but clothes and transportation person. being cheaper. The Guardian reports that 
after Brexit, London got a lot cheaper, stating that the city has recently arrived at a newfound bargain basement status. Oh, wow. In fact, according but to- After Brexit. Yeah, but now we're watching it like two years later after, like now three it's going, years later. Like now and it's going, like now it's- the whole world, but inflation's going mad, so there's no bargains anywhere. No. But after Brexit, it seems quite good. <laughs> Except at um, Poundworld. Ooh, some things at Poundworld isn't always a Poundworld. In England is. Not always. Sometimes you've got the little, like, treat section. It's like £5. I'm like, but I'm in pound world. Don't tempt me with that and then show me it's five. You know what I mean? They have the Dollar Tree, don't they? That's their equivalent for them. Do you have a dollar one? Let us know in the comments. They do. I believe you. Dollar Tree. <laughs> dollar to Tree. To the website Numbio <laughs> that compares cost of prices around the world, the cities are fairly equal in terms of eating, going out, shopping, but just a bit more in New York. Renting in London is cheaper than New York if you're not renting high-end apartments, but actually buying a place is much more expensive in London on average. Travel is more expensive in London, whether you buy your own gas or use public transportation. Gas and electric is also more expensive in London, but internet is almost half the price of New York on average. Education is more expensive in New York, and it's thought that inner-city London schools are a bit better than inner city New York schools. Oh, wow. The average wage in New York is $4,542 a month, while in London it is only $2,952 yeah. a month. Who's that might that sound bad for Londoners, but they do get free healthcare, lots of paid vacation, and in general, better workers' rights. Very Money true. aside, what about the general day-to-day -day creature comforts? Well, as London is much bigger, it also has more space. With that, you get more parks and more green spaces. At the same time, New York is easier to get around, and some people speaking on forums say, a bit more fun as it's compact and unlike London, is more of a 24-hour city. If you are out at night, London may have more crimes in terms of robberies and assaults, but New yeah. York has more murders. According to Numbio, respondents oh, to a survey said they felt similar about safety in London and New York. It seems the difference is bigger crimes are more common in New York, but your chances of finding trouble on the street is more likely in London. Okay, we should, however, sense. take this to those that have lived in both cities. According to one American man who did both for many years, he said on a forum thread that both cities were too expensive, even when single. He loved the open sprawling green spaces in London and at times didn't like the noisy claustrophobic streets of New York. He did however like the fact that in New York you could sit down anywhere and find enjoyment while London was too spread out for him at times. The writer agreed with the sites we cited already on costs of things, also the heavy workload in the US for most people, but did say in terms of meeting new people, socializing, or partying, New York is easier. One more thing he pointed out that we didn't mention yet was the weather, which is a deal breaker for some people. New York has colder winters and can have steaming hot summers, whereas London is cool, damp, and grey for much of the year, with some warm weeks in summer and only a mod- Apart from, apart from last, literally three days ago when it was on fire because of the heat. Yeah, London was yesterday, was like- Incredible like, weird, like wildfires, didn't Yeah, we? we're just not used to it. Well, wildfires in the buildings. <laughs> yeah, like how homes were burning down. Yeah, we're not used so to hot. the heat. really cold winter compared to New York. We'll end it there with the weather. Have you lived in or visited either of these two- Let us know in the comments. We've visited both. Not lived in either. And you know what? Going off that and going off my opinions, they're pretty similar. They are pretty similar. One's just yeah. an American version, one's just a British version. You're going to have pros and cons in both. Yeah, There's not and, much, yeah, is you're there? Gonna have you're going to have your own opinion, aren't you? Own opinion. Let us know your opinion in the comments after watching that, after gathering your own opinion before, after maybe even visiting. Let us know what you've come to in the comments below. How many likes did we have? Ooh, you even... 2,602. No, that's definitely wrong. I swear it was 3,222. No, <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Let us know in the comments. I think it was 2,602. Let us know in the comments, guys. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and watch the video. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.